Hey guys, 大家好 Welcome back to AB Chinese and Happy Friday. Hope you guys are having a wonderful almost weekend. Today we're going to try out Du Chinese, and I am super excited for this app because this app focuses on reading Chinese or learning Chinese by reading, and I consider that the superior way to learn Chinese. So let me give you guys a bit of a backstory and tell you how I learned Chinese. When I was younger, my parents were traditional Chinese parents, and they got us flashcards to learn Chinese. They printed out like lists of 500 most common Chinese characters or common idioms that all school grade children should know. And I tried to memorize those things, but let me tell you, I did not memorize the 500 most common Chinese characters until I was 16 years old. And that was not because I was stupid, but because there was there was no drive. Okay, there was no motivation. I didn't like memorizing things if I didn't know how it was going to be used. And then when I actually had a personal interest to learn Chinese in college, that was when I found that the best way for me to learn Chinese was by simply reading stories and then picking up vocabulary from the stories. And let me show you a book that I have here. So this is 三百六十五页识字故事 and this is a book that my parents got me when we were young. But unfortunately, I didn't really use this when we were young, and I didn't realize how good it was until later on. So this book, I think, literally does everything right. If you take a look here,、um, it shows you the character that you're trying to learn on top, the key character, so to walk, and then it gives you three examples of it in the context of a word, and then finally you have a story at the bottom which uses the key word. So you're not just memorizing this character out of context. You're learning about it, how it's used in words, and how those words are used in a story. So let's give this Du Chinese app a try and see if it's any good. Well, man, 开始吧 So this is what the homepage looks like. As always, I will go to intermediate, beginner, and then advanced. So let's look for an intermediate lesson. Oh, Heroes of the Three Kingdoms, 三国演义 Let's give this a shot. 城门开了，军队慢慢向外面走去。曹操坐在又高又大的马车上，刘备和他的两个弟弟骑马跟在后面。他要走了，大家都很难过。有人大声说：“刘大人不要走。”还有人大声说：“徐州人，谢谢刘大人。”说话的人越来越多。徐州人都知道我是您的人，他们的心在我这儿，其实就是在您这儿。我是留下来还是跟您走，都是您的决定。虽然他问刘备留还是走，但其实心里一点儿都不同意刘备留下来。徐州是他的，徐州人的心当然也要是他的。刘备也是聪明人，怎么会不明白这一点？刘备跟着曹操的军队走了半个月，终于到了河南。哎，河南是我老家耶。Okay, so let's go through the story and、um, let's see what features I can find. And they are color coded for what are they color coded for? Oh, level. So the blue is HSK four. I can't talk. Why did I say six? I'm pulling this up by tapping on the characters. So you can also save it. I think I just saved Zo. Yep. So if you tap on a sentence, then it gives you the English translation on top. The city gates opened and the troops slowly walked outside. And if you tap the play button on the bottom, I think you can read it. Cao Cao, 坐在又高又大的马车上，坐在又。That 坐在 is pronounced a little bit weird. Like 坐在 should be 坐在 You can speed up or slow down the reading speed as well. So this is half time speed. 又高又大的马车上，刘备。You can make it faster. 和他的两个弟弟骑马跟在后面。On the bottom, if we hit Pinyin. Okay, you can toggle the pinion off as well. Oh, and you can toggle off the HSK markers. So you could just have this as a blank text. Okay, nice. Now let's try a beginner level because I'm interested to see how they can get readable content that is still beginner level. Okay, this is our unique story based on a set of 150 unique characters. 我是猫，我是猫，我一岁了。我喜欢吃东西，我也喜欢睡觉。星期一我在商店吃饭，我在学校睡觉。星期二商店没有饭。I just read through the story and I think it's written really well. So what it does is just from reading this, I can tell what the keywords are because they repeat all the time, and that is great for your learning, right? Because 
you're learning in context of a story, but you're also seeing the same vocabulary come up again and again, and that'll really drill it into your brain. Xinqi is one of the key vocabulary for all the days of the week. Xinqi yi, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? What zai, I'm at. That's also a key vocabulary in here that shows up a lot. What zai, shang dian chi fan. What zai, xue xiao chi fan. What zai, fan dian chi fan. And notice how it changes every time. So yeah, wonderfully written. Now let's go ahead and go to master level, which is the highest level they have, and check this out. Okay, I turned all of the pinyin and stuff back on, and you'll see that here, there's like a space in between it, and I'm not sure why. Oh, wait, I realize why there's a space there. It's because the pinyin on top needs that space because cheng is too long and they couldn't fit it next to each other. And the solution to that, honestly, is to space all of the Chinese characters further apart from each other so that you have sufficient spacing for the pinyin if you do run into a lengthy pinyin like cheng. So basically, I don't think there's a lot more other functions to this app. This is the gist of the app. It's just a reading app. There's a lot of content here for you to explore. You can study your saved words. Start the test. Oh, there's a word, word details page. Okay, you have the simplified version, you have the traditional version on top, you have the pronunciation, the definition, external links to Pleco, Line, and Hunt. Okay, so if you have these dictionaries installed, I'm assuming if you tap on those, it'll take you right to the dictionaries. You have example sentences. Uh-oh, that pronunciation is not correct. I think you guys can all hear that. It's supposed to be Zhaoji. If I click forget. <laughs> I don't know, maybe might just sort them to a different place. We recommend studying about 20 words per day. Wow, that's a lot. So actually, instead of clicking the study now, which brings us to the page we've been seeing, you can just click the listen as well. If you just want to listen to a lesson, you can do this without seeing the text. So this is what it looks like. I think the playback speed is different depending on which level you're at. So with the more beginner lessons, even if it's at 1.0 speed, it's slower than the 1.0 speed of the advanced lessons. Yeah, that's faster. That's actually a nice attention to detail. I think the beginner level learners will definitely appreciate that. Of all the apps that I've tried, Du Chinese has been the easiest by far for me to review and the easiest for me to recommend. And here's why. I've said it so many times, but learning in context is so important because if you're just going down a list and memorizing words and new vocabulary, you might know the dictionary definition, but you'll be hard pressed to know how it's actually used in real life. Like, I can tell you that ye and wan chang both mean night, but how will you know how to use these and when to use which in different situations? If you didn't know, you might end up making some dumb sentence like wo ye yao chu men. So I told you guys a bit about how I learned Chinese at the beginning, and let me elaborate on that a little bit more. Now I do realize that as a native speaker, the situation is a little bit different between me and most of you guys, but I'll address that a little bit later. Aside from my early years when my parents were forcing me to learn Chinese, when I actually learned Chinese myself, I never learned any vocabulary word outside of context. In other words, I would only learn words that I encounter in real life. I would never go down lists and try to memorize the words that I think I should know. Studying off of a list is also not a very efficient way for you to memorize vocabulary if you want to learn as fast as possible. Let me ask you something. Do you know why phone numbers in the US are split into a set of three numbers, a set of three numbers, and a set of four numbers? It's actually so you can remember it better. It's because the human mind cannot store more than seven or eight digits in the short-term memory, so a phone number would surpass that amount. So, three sets of three or four digits is easier to remember than a string of 10 digits. So what does this have to do with Chinese? Well, let's say you're one of those people that are memorizing off of a list, you're studying a list. Let's just say HSK3, 300 words. Those 300 words kind of form a pool of memory in your brain. So when you go to recall those words, you'll remember them as an entry in your list of 300. It's different when you're studying in context. Because if you're learning in context and you're learning through stories, the stories by themselves are already much more memorable than studying a list of vocabulary. And remember that very beginner level story we covered today about the cat? So in that story, some of the key words were shang dian, xue xiao, fan dian. Those three key words are the only entries in that pool of memory. 
And that pool of memory is that story. So when you go to recall those vocabulary, you're thinking about that story, and that story only has three entries in its pool, which is much less than that pool of 300 you would be otherwise drawing from. And on top of that, another beautiful thing about learning through short stories is that you can have the same entry in different clusters as well. So let's say that you read that cat story and you learned the vocabulary word for store. Two days later, you read another story, and lo and behold, that word shows up again. So now, Shang Dian is going to be in your memory for the cat story as well as this new story you're learning. Okay, okay, so I know that some of you are probably thinking, well, it's different for you, you're a native speaker, you already grew up listening to Chinese, and yeah, that's true. So I didn't have to learn any Chinese grammar because I picked all that up naturally, and when I say I learned Chinese, what I really meant was I had to increase the size of my vocabulary. And I did that by simply reading stories and texts of increasing levels of difficulty and studying the words I didn't know. But I could argue that you guys could use the same method too. Because for you, as long as you can learn the grammar, then adding on vocabulary by learning through context will be of tremendous help to you. Chinese grammar is actually not that difficult, especially for an English speaker, because it's similar to English, there's no verb conjugations, and in this day and age, there are so many free resources for grammar. Chinese Wiki, I've mentioned that on this channel for many times now. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. And actually, the app I tried out last time, Nin Chinese, actually has like 400 grammar lessons on their website, and that's free for everyone. This means that if you wanted to, you could just learn grammar from those free resources and then use this app to build your vocabulary. All of that aside, this app really is just a well-built app too. The quality of the text is superb. In addition to your regular educational kind of text, there's also text about Chinese culture, there's Chinese folklore, there's, there's even like some like articles about current events in there. And the range for skill levels on this app is also really wide. If you go all the way at the bottom at the novice level, you'll find some really easy text. If you go all the way up to the master level, that's basically real-world kind of text you would find on Chinese internet, on Baidu.com or something. The pricing of this app is slightly on the pricier side, I would say. It's $15 a month or $120 for a year, but if you use the code ABCHINESE, you do get 10% off of that price, and I honestly think even though it's a little bit more pricey, it is still worth it because I really do believe that this app can offer you more value than basically any of the other apps I've tried. Yeah, that's how much I like it. And yeah, while we're here, I do have to nitpick some faults. There's not very many. There were two words that were pronounced incorrectly in the time I was using it. And another small problem was I hated how they sometimes spaced out the characters in order to fit the pinyin on top. So the way that most educational materials in China works is they actually space out the characters more to give room for the pinyin. This way you can have uniform spacing between characters and it doesn't look like some characters are clustered closer to each other and others are spread apart. So yeah, if the app developers could fix that, that would be great. And full disclaimer, Du Chinese did not pay me to say any of this. I do get a cut if you use that code ABChinese, so that would help support the channel. But I'm honestly just saying this because I genuinely believe that this app has so much value to offer to anyone who's learning Chinese. Unless you're an early beginner, this app will help you out. And actually, I'm gonna need a recommendation from you guys because I wish there was an app like this for Korean and I do not know of any. So if you do know of an app that's similar to this, but for Korean, let me know because I'd be interested. All right, guys, that is all I have for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. If you're looking for something similar to this, but for video, check out Dong Chinese. Their media library has a similar function for video. And if you like learning through stories, but you require a bit more like a hold your hand approach, then maybe check out Super Chinese and I'll link those right over here. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>